Hello, I'm Tara Brabazon, and I'm the Dean of Graduate Studies at Charles Darwin University, and welcome to Outrider 29, Nitro's Non-Traditional Research Outputs. Now, whatever discipline you are in, Nitro's matter to you, to your present, and to your future. Now, obviously, we've configured this binary opposition of traditional research outputs and non-traditional research outputs that we'll problematise and question shortly. So what exactly are traditional research outputs? I think we all know scholarly monographs, books, book chapters, but also refereed articles and refereed conference proceedings. So they are traditional scholarly outputs. But what makes traditional outputs traditional in terms of their research quality is their capacity to be peer reviewed. So they have a quality assurance protocol. That's what peer review is. But also these outputs have an enhancement stage through editing or proofreading and design. A traditional research publication must show scholarly activity. So it's got to show, yes, a literature review. It's got to show a series of citations. It's got to demonstrate how this particular output is engaging with existing knowledge and moving knowledge forward. Originality, therefore, does matter. It must not be simply a recutting of earlier work. It has moved through peer review. It is part of knowledge, but also moves knowledge forward. And significantly, it is in a format that enables dissemination. Nitros recognise that there is an alternative way of constructing research and disseminating research. So that includes, for example, research reports to external bodies. Often this is termed grey literature but also portfolios, live performances in events, recorded creative works, curated public events, and also original creative works. Nitros can, and I would argue, and will be arguing through this outrider, must exist in all disciplines. So for example, it could be a science photograph of a bee that we'll talk about shortly architectural design, digital storytelling in physiotherapy research, urban planning, engineering design, furniture design, just to name a few. Nitros share two characteristics with all publications. Firstly, the research must be publicly available. And secondly, it must be created by authors that can be named. Okay, nitros do not conform at all, really, to a traditional way of enacting knowledge and particularly rendering knowledge accountable in our national universities because nitros don't slot into clear tiers or ranking modalities. They're not disciplined by gatekeepers. Well, they are disciplined by gatekeepers, but just different gatekeepers. <laughs> So they're research outputs that are really innovative in both form and content. They can include reports, they can include software, visual texts, sonic texts. So, for example, a wonderful former PhD student I knew, I still know, Dr. James Dory. Hi, James. Doctor, so he finished his PhD, completed, completed his PhD on bees. It was a truly great thesis, did incredibly well through examination and publications. But what makes James remarkable is that through his PhD, he also became a nature photographer, particularly specialising in bees that exist in low light. So what always used to make me smile and used to make me so proud is when James used to send me an email, in the signature block, it would say, PhD student, and photographer. How entrepreneurial is that? So it has become an important career to him. Yes, he's got this remarkable B research that I will share with you in the references section of this outrider, but also for his profound photography expertise.
So he delivered a very success, successful PhD, but also delivered an incredibly successful series of nitros. Nitros summon innovation, innovation in form and content. That is, they create innovation in signifiers and signifieds and how they align. Now, this all seems pretty innovative and important, and it is, but nitros do have a lot of problems, and I'm going to talk overtly about those problems now. So in the ERA, the Excellence in Research Australia, this sort of national review that's existed in Australia for over a decade, on the disciplines and in the disciplines where nitros dominate, we didn't see any uptick. We didn't see any national or international improvement in the output, so the quality, the excellence of the outputs. And that made it distinct from physics, from chemistry, from the experimental sciences that through the ERA saw an improvement over time. Was not the case in the disciplines with the nitros. The argument for this stagnant practice-based research and why it stayed stagnant has come from Julian Knowles. And he put in place two causes. Firstly, he stated that the endless restructures and mergers in Australian universities have meant that the creative-led and the practice-based disciplines have been moved into structures, academic resource units, departments, faculties, that don't really understand what they're doing and why. So there's no specialism, say, in studio-based practice. Now, I think that's a very good critique, and I think it's accurate. But Knowles also argued that academic management, academic leadership in Australia has very, very few managers in it with any expertise in nitros. And as someone who has studied the leadership structures in Australian universities, uh, qual and quant, I can confirm that that is accurate. The overwhelming majority of vice chancellors and deputy vice chancellors in our universities are composed of engineers and people from the experimental sciences and medical sciences. Full stop. So therefore, research management at an experiential level is disconnected from creative-led and practice-based research. Again, good critique, pretty hard to argue with that, it's true. Now, Craig Batty in 2019 stated that, quote, university management should take creative practices seriously before it is too late, end of quote. Well, I'm recording this five years later and, you know, it probably is too late, but I've come up with a solution to rejuvenate nitros, but more for that in a second. So Knowles is very uncomfortable about the configuration of this binary opposition of traditional research outputs and non-traditional re <laughs> non -traditional research outputs. He states, quite rightly, rhetorically, what is non-traditional? And that's a good argument if you think about disciplines like music, okay? Music for 80 years has produced music as its research output. So that's not non-traditional. That is exactly what music as a discipline is about. Again, that's a very, very good argument. But non-traditional research outputs is gaining momentum because we've got so many research assessment protocols around the world. And the research assessment protocols are interested in books, book chapters, refereed articles, and conference proceedings. Those of us who develop all sorts of different outputs rarely have the research ecosystem or the assessment protocols to assess and understand and evaluate what we do. The question we do all have to ask ourselves is what does rigour look like when we're evaluating nitros? Now, we need to also recognise that just because you're creative, darling, with the greatest respect in the world, does not mean you're configuring nitros. So just because you've made a film does not mean that it's a nitro. Just because you've created a piece of music does not mean that it's a nitro. Just because you've written a novel does not mean that it's a nitro. Just because you've taken a photograph or configured a soundscape does not mean that it is a nitro. You know, we're talking about a research output here, not simply an output. If you make a film, that's great. Knock yourself out. Brilliant. 
but just because you make a film does not mean it is a research output. And that's why in most systems, beginning with some very, very strong work in the United Kingdom and Australia in the late 80s, so 1986, 87, 88, 89, we started to see through the RAE, the ERA and the REF verification protocols being put in place for nitros through exegetical components. So like our artefact and exegesis PhDs, the object may exist, and the object is great, but the research must be explained in the exegesis. This is an important stage, and this embodies really my clear critique of what's occurred in the Australian research ecosystem. Once more, when I was reading the literature to help you with nitros this week, for this outrider, I was disgusted, I was angry, filled with rage really. And I mean, I'm so angry about this issue that when it was emerging in Australia in the early 2000s, I left Australia for a British chair because I got so infuriated by these debates. So let me express these debates to you so you can make your own mind up. For my entire career, entire career since since I started teaching in universities when I was 21 years of age. I'm now 54 and close to death. But my entire career, I have been fighting elitist cultures in Australia. The people that find some types of music better than others, find art as superior to industrial design and craft, and putting it most basically a whole group of academics who think that high culture is so much better than popular culture. This is elitism. And it has nothing to do with research. Death metal can be a nitro as much as modernist orchestration. The problem, particularly in Australia, is that nitros are saturated with these ideologies of artistic value rather than research value. Patricia Levy, in her book Method Meets Art, described, quote, the natural affinity between research practice and artistic practice, end of quote. This is rubbish. Whenever anybody configures this binary opposition of, oh, this is a natural thing, this is a natural behaviour, this is a natural affinity, they're automatically constructing a binary opposition whereby something else is abnormal, artificial, crimogenetic, a problem. This is reinforcing over 200 years of an ideology that confirmed that art was of quality and value. Of course, art, capital A, has nothing to do with quality and value. It has to do with the class of the audience. Okay, we see all of these arguments, by the way, in real time in Matthew Arnold's 1869 book, Culture and Anarchy. Natural affinities are not the point of research. In fact, I would argue disrupting what we think of as natural and normal is actually the point of research. What we need to be doing in research is transparency, accountability, repeatability, rather than assuming this is natural and this is the way that it's always been. Now, Levy confirmed the scope and scale of my critique in the following statement. So listen to her argument, quote, researchers can say what they like, but the fact is that traditional peer-reviewed journal articles are totally inaccessible to the public. They are jargon-filled, geared towards academic peers, and circulated in highly specialised journals in academic libraries. End of quote. Right, so for Levy, it appears that she hasn't sort of grasped the internet open access journals and social media. So once more we see this arbitrary division between arts-based research and traditional research. It's arbitrary and it's incorrect. The notion that the arts, darling, is democratic, is collaborative, is participatory, while traditional research is aloof and cold and calculating, 
that binary opposition is both wrong and really unhelpful. Art is not research. Artistic practice and methodologies can absolutely enable research activity. So as you can see, culture and art are historical categories. They hold the biases and the discrimination and the prejudices of a particular time. Popular culture has equal use and value in research to art with or without the capital A. There is nothing in art that renders it special. It's only the assumptions about the class of the audience that make it special. Remember, popular culture attracts a wide audience. And supposedly because it attracts a wide audience, that makes it a problem. Wow. Quality is an ideology. It's not a static or an ahistorical configuration. Therefore, popular culture can be a nitro as much as art with or without the capital A. University research management processes, what are often called a research ecosystem, is a structure of measurements, of databases and data sets. So what a research ecosystem must do is it must be a reporting machine, okay? Therefore, research variables must fit into it rather than the system being porous, the system being flexible enough to grasp a diversity of research outputs. So publications, funding, research rankings, citations, all of these variables are very, very, very simple to measure. Nitros are much more difficult to evaluate, but it doesn't mean we don't work hard to validate this diversity. Now, I've talked a lot throughout Rider and indeed through a lot of the last 10 years of my career about the porous doctorate. All doctorates in all disciplines arch beyond the page. They move through online journals, through posters. Theses are submitted around the world through reports and grey literature and, yes, through nitros. Almost all theses, almost all research projects now are multimodal. And therefore, we have to start to critique this notion of artistic quality art, which is used to marginalise academic processes for quality assurance. We must not allow that to occur. And that's why whenever you hear me speak, I talk about artefacts rather than art. Now, the OECD Frascati Manual from 2002, so a long time ago, but they offered some of the best advice and guidelines when working through experimental research. They stated, quote, they support creative work undertaken on a systematic basis in order to increase the stock of knowledge and the use of this stock of knowledge in new applications. End of quote. So I think the choice of language in that phrase, in that guideline, is really instructive and it's useful. The aim is to create artefacts, a stock of knowledge. And that stock of knowledge enables new research. Now, chicken stock is not a meal. We add it to a meal and it creates flavour. Right. So art is not intrinsically research. It can create a new way of thinking about evidence. It can be the basis of an outstanding research project, but in and of itself, it is not research. Now, my argument is very different from the colleagues who have offered some strong arguments, some fascinating arguments. I may disagree with them, but it's important to acknowledge, read and support them and present them to you. But my argument about nitros is a little bit different. I believe and I am arguing and I am supporting that nitros exist throughout the university, from physics to midwifery, from geography to biology, from computer science to architecture, from speech pathology to mathematics.
We need to remember James, hi James, and his wonderful photography of bees. We need to remember the legendary Australian Legal Research Awards. So much respect for this organisation. The Australian Legal Research Awards, which every year in law, awards the best nitro. Brilliant. Wouldn't it be amazing if all disciplines, from physics to physiotherapy to photography, ensured there was an award for nitros every single year? So for all of us desperately interested in nitros and welcoming them in all disciplines far beyond the creative arts, we need to understand their research value rather than the pretensions of high culture and elitism. Let's plan how we're going to evaluate the research quality the research impact, the research engagement, and the research esteem that reverberates around nitros. Here are some options for you to start monitoring the impact of your nitros. Social media feedback, alt metrics, reviews, the number of downloads, the library holdings, any outreach organisations that have used your nitro, but also translations. For someone who's done nitros for 20 years, the key in this is to monitor how your nitro moves. So track its movement beyond you, beyond yourself, beyond your creation, and track how it moves around the world to different people, to different organisations, and monitor where it goes and how it is used. When we start to enact this practice, we start to move from creation into meaning, from art into artifact, from text into context, and from culture and into research. I wish you love, light, and peace. Tea out.